Hey guys, it's Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got this cute little box for you. And that's so adorable. All right, so if you're like me, this Fruit Stripes gum is kind of nostalgic. This is totally a blast from my childhood. And we've got a really cute little box for you today. Holds two packs of little Fruit Stripe gum. And it has a little tuck closure here super simple super cute little box you can get three of this box from one piece of cardstock and you can get two filled with one pack of fruit stripes I got this at my Dollar Tree all right while you're getting in here I am going to take just a minute on housekeeping really important stuff June is an amazing month all right so if you are like most people I talk to and you are completely crazy about this annual catalog. If your wish list is super long and you're finding yourself putting in multiple orders or um, spending um, a lot of your crafting budget in this catalog, you're not alone. So I would highly recommend if you are in love with this catalog that you consider the Pick a Free Bundle Starter Kit promotion. When you join Stampin' Up, every order you place receives 20 or 25% discount. And right now, when you join the Kitchenettes, you can pick a free bundle and add it to your starter kit. So that's in addition to the $125 worth of other merchandise of your choice. And um, shipping on your kit is free. You get a free paper pumpkin with your starter kit and any Stampin' Tool bundle for free. So if you're like me, this catalog has just blown me away. I'm so um, inspired by everything. There's so many great stamp sets and bundles and um, the artwork is fantastic. So many inspired little things like the little zebras and the cute fruit that make fantastic treat packaging. There's just so much that I want. And if you're finding that your wish list is really, really long too, why not join the kitchenettes? We'd love to have you. So that's Today through the end of June, when you join the Kitchenettes, you can pick a free bundle. I'm going to just show you one more awesome promotion here. So your wish list is really long, but you're not sure you want to join. That's okay. Um, Stampin' Up! has got a fantastic promotion going on this month only through the 30th. When you order $250 or you collect $250 worth of orders. So this is a great time to say, say to your crafty buddy, hey, if you order 125, I'll order 125 and we can split the $50 host rewards. Because with a $250 order, you get $25 in Stampin' Rewards. There's a 10% host rewards on that order. During June, Stampin' Up! is going to double that, make it $50. They're adding a $25 bonus. So whether you order that yourself or you collect orders, you're going to get a $50 bonus on a $250 order. Or if you buddy up with a friend, you'll each get $125. And um, Stampin' Up! will give you $25 for free. Now, if you live in the Chicago area, I'm in Rolling Meadows. So that's um, Rolling Meadows is Schaumburg, Arlington Heights, uh, Woodfield Mall, Ikea, um, and right up to the Arlington Race Park. So if you can pick up your order, you're local, you want to do $125, get $25 free, call me. I'm buddying up local local stampers to um, enjoy these extra stampin' rewards during this month. All right, so that's housekeeping. And this is our treat. So the little box that we're making, it fits two of these little five-piece packs of gum. So you will see this again at Halloween and you will see this again at Christmas. Wouldn't double mint or when extra does the candy cane flavor, wouldn't that be great for Christmas? So two of them fit right in there and you can get three of these out of a sheet. So let's get started. All right, here's our little designs for today. I've got real red cardstock for my base. Let me grab that and we're going to score this up now. You guys probably already know, but if you're new to Kitchen Table Stamper, when I do a box, I always make myself a template and then I photograph this template for you. Some people are visual and they wanna see 
this template will remind you where to do your cutting and scoring, rounded edges and, and little thumb notches and things. So look out for the project sheet. It'll be up later today. I'm trying to get it up before bingo tonight. Um, and it's free, it's printable, it's available on the blog. All right, um, I will notify you tonight when it's ready. So we're gonna go ahead with this piece of paper. Our paper size is eight and a quarter by two and seven eighths. And we're gonna score it on the two and seven eighths inch side first. And we're gonna score at half inch on both two and seven eighth inch sides. So there's our portrait. Now we're gonna turn it landscape, so rotate 90 degrees. And you're gonna score at three and an eight three and five eighths, six and three quarters, and seven and a quarter, okay? Now let's slide this to the side and we're gonna grab a bone folder and some paper snips. We're gonna work these score lines and then trim away the excess. So we've worked all of our score lines. Kathy says, love your templates. They're wonderful. Thank you for those. It's my pleasure. And my pleasure. I'm so glad that you find them useful. All right, so we're gonna cut down here. This is our six and three quarters and our seven and a quarter inch score lines. And you've got this longer um, flap here, but not the body of the box. Do you see what I'm saying? We're gonna go down from the top. We're gonna go all the way to the second score line. And I always debulk, cut a little dart out of there. I just take the whole score line out. Same thing on this one. Pass the first score line down to the second and debulk. Then rotate and trim off the rectangles and this will be your inside tabs. Now we need our bottom tabs and we're just going to liberate those guys. So you're going to cut all four of them, little dart, and liberate these small tabs. That's it. This box is so easy. And three out of a sheet makes it really economical too. And I think that all those little five packs of gum are going to fit perfectly in here. So if you can find the flavor and the theme, you can really do some cool stuff with this. All right, little tabs. So here's our three and an eighth. Here's our top tab. So this is the front of our box. This is the bottom of our box. You're gonna fold these little tabs in and add some adhesive. So I've been using my Stampin' Seal for some projects now, since I got it for boxes and things. And I'm finding that it really holds together well. It's nice and sturdy. It glides on smooth. It tears away from the um, dispenser easily. Every once in a while I have to give it a little nudge with my index finger to get it started, especially if when I pull, um, it pulls off like one extra little tab and the tip isn't sticky. I sometimes have to give it a little roll. But other than that, I've been really enjoying it. I'm gonna take my little tab and I'm gonna fold it to the back of the box here. See, we're gonna make that 90 degree corner. So there's the back of our box coming together. Same thing with this side. Then our front is gonna to wrap to the back. We want those seams to be at the back of the box. So we'll square this up. Bring these guys down. And then same thing here. I'm gonna put my bone folder inside the box and make it, um, and burnish it, get a strong bond there. And that is the base of our little box. Now let's do some finesse here. I'm gonna round my corners on the tab because it's gonna be seen on the front. It's a little tuck tab box. So I'm just gonna do a quick corner round there. Got some designer series paper. My designer series paper is one and three quarters by three, I believe. Yeah, one and three quarters by three. 
It'll be on the project sheet for you too. Let's go ahead and pop that on the front of the box. We're just gonna center it. I burnish that guy down. And then I have the retired half inch punch. I don't know what to do without it. There's nothing to substitute for it. Um, I just keep on using it. I'm sure you've got a half inch punch. Half inch circle. We're gonna just pop through both layers. <laughs> it's just so cute. I can't even stand it. Oh gosh, this one's really got me. I'm um, speaking pretty high praise of myself. <laughs> Two packs of fruit stripes. And there's our little box. Isn't that cute? Okay, now let's make the little tag. So we have a tuck tab closure. All right, this stamp set I'm using today is the Celebration of Tags. Now, I loved the um, tags, tags, tags in the holiday catalog. So when I saw Celebration of Tags, I already had the... Um, trio of tags die. I knew that I just had to have this, but especially for the little yay zebra and the whale. Hello. I also like this is for you, dude. So those are my three favorites, but I'm really enjoying this stamp set and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to stamp up a little zebra using the celebration of tags and memento tuxedo black. So I got a scrap. The nice part about this is you can do all three stamps at one time, you can make a set of three tags. You can ink them all up and um, set them aside for later or work on three projects at once, whatever floats your duck. But you can also just ink up the one stamp that you need. You can ink up the one stamp that you need and you can cut out all three tags at one time or you can just cut out the tag that you need using a scrap. So it's a really versatile set. I like that I can do all three tags that come on the stamp because it's three stamps, three tags on each stamp, or I can pick and choose. All right, let's get the big shot in here and we'll cut that guy out. <laughs> Rhonda wants a zebra cake box. Um, here's the thing, Rhonda. So I was at Meyer and I was about to pick up the zebra cakes, but the, all the ones at Meyer expired June, I don't remember, 21st or 24th or something like that. I was like, no way. I can't have a whole box of zebra cakes that expire in a few days. Like Meyer needed to rotate its stock or something. So it's on my to-do list, but I'm not buying a whole box of um, zebra cakes that are going to expire in a day. All right. We've got a little bit more stamping to do here because I chose to pop up my little balloon. See that? You don't have to do it. You can... Um, Instead of popping it up, you can color it in and put a little bit of the fine tip glue on it and let it dry. It'll dry kind of like crystal effects. Um, you could put an enamel on the balloon to make it shiny. So it's your choice. I like to cut. I have good dexterity. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. But you could just color it in and you could accent it in a totally different way. That's okay. So we're going to stamp that little balloon on the scrap. Me. All right. So I got real red. Light, I'm just gonna scribble in. I'm gonna leave a tiny, do you see? I'm actually trying to on purpose leave a tiny little white highlight on my balloon. We'll see if it stays once I do the dark real red. I might, I have a tendency of blending everything to medium. All right. And then blend the light and dark real red together. It's such a tiny little detail, I know. I'm gonna set that aside for a second. I've got my Whisper White Seam Binding here. All right, so if you're playing bingo with me tonight, this is a technique that you want to, um, that you want to see. And we're gonna get started with it. You can get started with it early if you want to. We're taking our white seam binding and our bingo tonight, and we're gonna color it all different colors. So we have, you know, five different color ribbons to choose from. And all you are gonna do with this is use your stamp and blend marker, the brush tip. And I like to run the light color. I'm using granny apple green. And then I like to run the dark color down one side. And if you do it while it's really good and wet, that might be all you need to do because it'll blend and give you kind of an ombre effect. If you're finding that it's looking too harsh, you can go 
back over, or if you're like me and you missed a spot, you can go back over with the light one and kind of push the dark back a little bit. We want that to dry before we need to tie a bow. So let's set that aside and let that dry for a second. That whisper white seam binding is any color you want it to be, which is pretty awesome. All right. I need one more bit of die cutting. So we've got kind of a clean space here. Let's grab the machine again. I didn't grab the die set. This is the little banner we're cutting. It'll be on the project sheet, which die set this is from, but it's the one that coordinates with the, with the sailboats. You guys are using that die set and that stamp set a lot on the craft social. So I know a lot of you know what. All right, this little dude, I'm gonna just trim it out. Even the smallest little stuff isn't too um, difficult to trim out. If you make sure that you hold the scissors firmly, your um, middle finger through the loop, your index finger supporting the scissor, your dominant hand opens and closes the scissor. But if you notice, my left hand, my non-dominant hand is doing the heavy lifting. That's the one that turns the paper. And then you get a nice smooth cut. All right. I need some Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm gonna stick that, that balloon down before I lose it. All right, I'm gonna use this little guy at the edge here. I love this little detail. It's a small thing, but it's the details that make the whole, right? <laughs> All right, this one is gonna go right on here. I put my dimensional on the tag and then bring my balloon to the dimensional. It's easier than trying to get the dimensional stuck on that little bitty piece. Our ribbon is dry, it dries really fast. And I'm gonna slide through the tag and tie a bow. We are almost done. I got a cool embossing for you. And then we'll be all done. All right, tag. I don't usually tie over under like that anchor knot. It just makes your bows bulky. You can just arrange your ribbon so that it's pretty straight up and down. And then in your dominant hand, push up, don't twist. See, there's nothing twisted over itself here. And pinch, bring the top over your index finger. Now your index finger's holding open the space, so just pinch it between your fingers and push through. Then when you pull the loops, see, it's coming right through there, when you pull the loops, little finesse and you get a good bow every time and it's going to be your flattest bow which is especially important for cards all right so in a little more finesse i want some big loopy loopy ears <laughs> there's our tag um let's see here all right tie this guy up So this one is Granny Apple Green. This one's Daffodil Delight. I don't know if I ever told you that. My colors are Granny Apple Green, uh, Daffodil Delight, and Real Red. And I have to tell you, I was very tempted to grab um, Cucumber Crush. If you have Cucumber Crush of stuff left, that's a pretty Cucumber Crush green right there. But if you don't, if you missed out on it, it's now retired. Um, Granny Apple Green makes really cute treat boxes. All right, let's do both of these. <laughs> I am totally eyeballing center, and usually I don't trust myself to do that, but not too bad. All right. Slide everybody to the side. We're going to do a quick little punch and emboss. I've got Daffodil Delight. I've already got a Granny Apple Green. We're going to cut an everyday label. Love this label. It layers up fantastic with the little tags from the trio of tags die set. I'm gonna grab my big shot, but I only need my platform for this. We're gonna emboss with this Argyle embossing folder. I don't know why I wanted to put Argyle with the zebra, but I just really wanted to. It seems to match to me, and I don't know if I um, have some kind of correspondence to like, was there ever an Argyle zebra? Um, or maybe it's just stripes and Argyle, but I've got both of my little labels in the Argyle folder. I love this because you can do three of these boxes out of one sheet. You can do two 
out of the one package of gum and you could if you punch your labels first you could emboss a bunch of labels all at one time you could probably emboss six or more labels at one time so you could really um, produce these pretty quickly if you needed a bunch of them all right so look at that do you guys hoping that the camera will sharpen up because that argyle is amazing all right here's our tags our argyle our boxes our sample make sure you guys can see everything these are the little labels that we cut out and i need dimensionals and i need some seal plus all right so i love this it's a silly little thing but i love it i'm going to take my zebra tag and i'm going to put a half a dimensional this way a half a dimensional that way so split it and then i'm going to split another one this way then i'm going to peel these side ones and then line up my little banner and look it fits so perfect right behind this tag and those little dimensionals pick it up now I'm going to take a little bit of seal and then remove the adhesive here and then I'm going to put this little arrangement on top of the everyday label punch isn't that just so cute how they line up now when we when we seal our box or when we close our box it's got a little tuck tab so we have to be very careful where we put our adhesive on the back of the everyday label you want to make sure that you only put the adhesive on the bottom half of the everyday label and you want to use a lot of adhesive because this is what holds the box closed it's going to get um, used as you open the box and then reclose it so we're going to go ahead and close our box nice and tight and then add the label so that it's just about i don't know an eighth or a quarter of an inch from the top fold center it right to left and then burnish it down and then what you've done is you've made a little flip top for your box see what a cutie, right? Oh my gosh, I can't even stand it. All right, you guys, if you've got any questions about anything, events at Kitchen Table Stamper, the specials, pick a free bundle, the um, annual catalog kickoff celebration with the extra stampin' rewards, uh, the project, the projects, bingo, the new catalog, if there's anything I can do for you, just reach out, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com or um, to shop, buzz over to Marissa Alvarez at stampinup.net. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.